which part of the heart stores love? Ah, <laughs> because they tell us, I love you from the bottom of my heart. I want to know. Oh my which god. Which side? I, I please. Hmm. Please don't lie well, to us. Well, the heart is full of blood. I oh, wonder where people, people store each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Phoenix and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Catherine Weiner. Please call me Kate Mimi. This is another opportunity for us to listen to a healthcare worker. I believe that it is time that stories of healthcare workers are told by fellow healthcare workers. Um, I have with me Ivy. Hi. <laughs> Ivy Mwiwa. She's a lovely Kenyan registered nurse and a UK registered nurse. We want to hear her story. What is she doing in the United Kingdom? Why is she a nurse in the first place? And what can she teach us? Because I believe every healthcare worker has something to tell the public about what they do. So um, this is me ambushing her and telling her to teach us something about what she does. So let's listen to her. Welcome. Okay. And that's what I wanted so um, to grow, just to grow. Now, I have a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. So many nurses in Kenya hold an American dream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you have a United Kingdom dream? Well, I felt the United Kingdom culture, uh -huh. work culture would be more suitable for me. Uh -huh. I mean, I want to be a mother one day and uh -huh. I, I don't want to be too busy for my kids. Uh -huh. And so I felt the work life balance is much better here than in the US. Plus, I've uh -huh. never really fancied US that much. Uh -huh. it, it hasn't really been on my mind that much. <laughs> You're hating. You're I'm not hating. hating. I'm not hating US, uh -huh. but you know uh -huh. how like most most of the people who went to the US didn't fancy UK. So uh -huh. yeah, true. yeah, I I don't know. I just didn't have that mm -hmm. inner thing to just go, go to for the US. US. No, interesting. No, um. So, Ivy, when did you come to the United Kingdom? September 2020, my birthday month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at you. You're only a few years old in this country, Such isn't it? Such a baby. So, did you apply to specifically a cat lab? No. Uh -huh. um, I started in a cardiac ward, uh -huh. then moved to a cat lab uh -huh. eight months later. Eight months later. Yeah. Now, I want you to tell me mm -hmm. what was your journey like from um, Kenya to the United Kingdom? Why? Because I keep getting this question, Ivy, mm -hmm. from so many people. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked about my own journey, but I appreciate that yours could be different. Mm -hmm. Probably there's something that you're going to say that is going to help one of the Team yeah. Phoenix members here. So um, if you don't mind, I know it has been repeated so many times, but yeah. please take us through from the beginning of the exam da, 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 yeah. to coming over to the United Kingdom. Did you use an agency? Did you oh, pay yeah. money and things like that? Please. Um, so I didn't pay money, but I used an agency. Okay. I used two, actually. Uh -huh. So, yeah, okay. I started off with one, uh -huh. um, which was... Uh, I think the CEO, we went to the same internship, uh -huh. like uh, not same internship area, but we were in that same internship period. And okay. then, you know, after internship where you're like, oh, what's the next step, um, registration and all yeah. that, we wanted to form a degree nurses association thing Ooh. that didn't see the day of life, uh -huh. I'm afraid. But mm -hmm. yeah, we tried. Okay. So I was like, oh, he's there. Mm -hmm. And some of my other friends were there. I was like, mm -hmm. OK, let me just see if mm. his agency can yeah. help, which it did. So I started with IELTS um, training, yeah. but I did it at a very slow rate, okay. slow pace. Mm. I was not, yes, I wanted to come to the UK, but mm. I wasn't that much in a hurry. Yeah. So I took my time. So mm. I started my IELTS training, I think in August, mm -hmm. did my exam in November, mm -hmm. then did CBT in February. Okay just after Valentine's. So it, it was a very weird date, so I couldn't forget the exam date. And then, um, yeah, then I did my interviews. I got a job uh -huh. in a cardiac ward, stroke uh -huh. CCU. Uh -huh. 
and yeah it was just so seamless like it's mm -hmm. it's um, IELTS then CBT then mm -hmm. the interview mm -hmm. got the job then I had to do the TB yeah thing. the TB clearance yeah TB yeah. clearance uh -huh. then the visa which didn't take long because uh -huh. I was coming to work, so I yeah. think they just didn't have many hurdles in mm -hmm. between. Ivy, who did you knew? Who did you know in the United Kingdom that gave you a hand? Um, those that encouraged me, mm -hmm. our friends. No, I'm saying, do, do you know anyone like in your family? Is there no. someone you know, no. like wherever you are employed, no. that connected you no. to the job? I went to a totally different. Place, like totally new place. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I knew my mom had a cousin here, mm -hmm. but someone who saw me when I was young. Mm -hmm. So I, there was no like family so, ties, uh, family I'm relations. But I didn't pay uh -huh. anyone, and uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't use connections. You know those African con I didn't have those connections. So are you telling me that you were employed on merit? Yeah. Do you mind telling Tim Phoenix about yeah. merit because? This is the question I keep getting. Mm -hmm. Catherine, connect me to jobs in the United Kingdom. Oh, wow, it can't happen. Do you know someone who can connect me to a job in the yeah, United Kingdom? So, so um, here, please talk to them. Um, coming here, it's based on how, like your work experience and your level of education. It's based on merit, clear merit. There is nothing like connections. So as long as you have your papers right, and you apply and you fit that job description or you can show that you can get along and like work your way through it you will get that job you'll get that job and um, i know now most agencies don't apply directly so you can apply directly to the hospital as long as they've written that they can give you sponsorship yeah yeah so it's it's based on you your merit and your trust in your just trust in yourself and pray Good. you'll definitely get it so Good. It's, it's, not that that's, difficult. That's very important. Yeah, it's not that difficult. It's not as difficult as you think, actually. I think we tend to feel like, hey, you came in Bali, you mm. know, like it's too far. Like that. that's one place I won't be able to get without yeah. somebody holding, help, my holding my hand and mm. helping me get that job. Mm. But no, you can you can get it easily. I know people who've applied directly and they are here now. Good, good. Yeah. That's important. They didn't, they didn't use any agent. That is very yeah. important because this is this is the other thing because Kenya has been placed on the amber list, but that 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 really confuses people because people think that you cannot get a job from no, Kenya, no, but you can, can you isn't can, it? Yeah. You just apply directly you to can. the employer. And uh, I would want to define some terms that you use. The IELTS exam is an English exam, yeah. meaning that you're able to speak, listen, right. communicate in English, yeah. in the English language. Mm -hmm. So it's a specific exam. Mm -hmm. The other thing is a CBT exam. Is yeah. it competence-based test or yeah. is it computer-based no. test? Huh? It's competence. Competence. Computer. Yeah, have you it's competence. My mind? It's, <laughs> no, it's competence like, based it's test. By, I think yeah. it's competence. Yeah, it is competence based test. It is offered by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of mm -hmm. the United Kingdom. This is a body that regulates nursing practice in the United Kingdom. It is an equivalent of the Nursing Council of Kenya. Each mm -hmm. and every country have their own form of nursing council that because nothing as a profession must be regulated just like medicine just like pharmacy just like mm. any other profession so the nothing and midwifery free council regulates nursing practice in the united kingdom and they prescribe the exams just like the exams you did in kenya for example were offered by mm. the nursing council of kenya yeah. so here the exams that are prescribed for overseas trained nurse they come from the nursing and midwifery council mm -hmm. and part one is that competence-based test and yeah. part two is the oski oski exam yeah. so the oski exam is actually a practical exam it is the objective structured clinical exam yeah Oski. Do I? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So um, once once you have the visa, right, yeah, yeah. then you're invited by your employer to come and do the Oski exam. So when you get to the UK, what my previous hospital did, we had a one month training. Uh -huh. So during the induction period, that's mm -hmm. when we were doing the training. Mm -hmm. And we, it was both online and um, face to face. Okay. So we did, it's a, after that training, then mm -hmm. you are booked for an exam okay. or they can book a date mm -hmm. that's not too close. Mm -hmm. So we had the training in September. We mm -hmm. did the exam in December. Okay. 
but at that time there was a backlog as well because okay. of COVID. COVID yeah. yeah, that's very true. But yeah. of course you went ahead and you passed. Now Ivy is mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. How was that transition? Uh -huh. How was that transition? It was amazing. <laughs> It was amazing. It uh -huh. was scary. It uh -huh. was amazing. Uh -huh. It was a mixture of, of emotions. Uh -huh. I was sick oh. when I was traveling. Oh dear. I couldn't eat. It was terrible. That feeling was terrible. Uh -huh. I think it's just the fear of unknown. Mm -hmm. Nursing diagnosis. That is the fear of <laughs> it unknown. Is. <laughs> it is. Honestly, it yeah. was. But then I, when I got here, I was like, this is a place I should mm -hmm. I, I needed to be in. Like mm -hmm. at that time, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, this feels nice. Mm -hmm. Then the weather mm. did something to me. Oh, like, really? Yeah, because I forgot to carry, yeah, just like today, I forgot to carry something warm. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I, I don't <laughs> take instructions too well, <laughs> especially when they're weather related. But then again, it's the, it's the British weather. Isn't I didn't it? expect it. I, I didn't know what it was then. So I didn't, I didn't, I forgot my warm jacket. So, uh -huh. you know, and it was around, um, so it was in September. Mm. I walked out of the airport and mm. I was like, no. Gosh. Like, I think I need to go back because oh, no. it was so cold. Uh -huh. So the culture shocks that I got here was just uh -huh. the weather, mm -hmm. which was very cold. Mm. Um, the food was different. So before mm. we knew the African shops. Mm. And then... How many sandwiches did you eat? Hey. <laughs> huh. <laughs> so can I tell you I added weight? <laughs> You will not believe I it. I, I was looking at myself, I was like, this was not me. If you take the before and after, you're like, a fan. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, and sandwiches. Uh, sandwiches. And, and then we were in quarantine for 14 days. Oh my word. Days. That, was, that was the time we were in for 14 days. Uh -huh. And because we came in 20 nurses uh -huh. through the agency, agency yeah. we, nine of us were in one house, in a uh -huh. nine bedroom house. Oh. So we were stuck. There for 14 days we mm. had to know each other. Oh dear. Yeah, it was really nice though. That is very good. Yeah. You form rapport from that point. Yeah, isn't and it, it was from different countries. Mm. See people coming in from Zimbabwe, mm. from Nigeria. Mm. It was it was really nice because mm. you get to understand their journeys yeah. as well. Yeah. And it's very different as well for them. So you're yeah. like, okay. So it wasn't just me. The yeah. the tears that you shed mm. when you see like you've passed your exam and you Aww. didn't think like you will mm -hmm. get there the anxiety that you mm. have waiting for your IELTS results mm. it's yeah it all pays off mm. eventually mm. so yeah that is good so other than the weather the mm -hmm. culture shock mm -hmm. what else did I find that I had to really really the food oh, weather, the food. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. and what about the accent <laughs> so the handing over bit, uh -huh. you know like when <laughs> My first shift, uh -huh. I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Honestly, I was sitting there, I was like, am I the only one who's not understanding? Or, like, is this a different thing? Uh -huh. What are they saying? Uh -huh. You know, cause, and then they talk really fast. Uh -huh. So it's like, huh? Before you, before you figure out one sentence, the person is already like the 10th description and you're like, I man, I can't keep up. How did you cope? I can't, so, because, again, we were living, many of us, yeah. so, when we go, like, when we went back home the mm -hmm. first day, we were uh -huh. like, eh, no, like, no. this one, no, like, we need to, we need to come up with ways on how we can tell them, please, slow down, because mm -hmm. we, it's, it, our English and your English is kind of different, and the, the pronunciation as well is different, mm. but with time, mm. you just get to understand, mm. it just comes, because English is English, yeah. It's only how fast it's said or, yeah. <laughs> and the influence of the mother tongue. I, yeah, I actually and, then think... our, and then our pronunciation is strange. You can say one word mm. several times to somebody. Mm. Someone won't understand. Mm. Somebody else will come and say the exact word. <laughs> and you're like, but I've just sort of been trying to say it that whole time. Like, so you end up needing an interpreter. <laughs> you're like, please, 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 please tell. <laughs> Please tell him what I want to say. Like, this is what I mean. <laughs> it's that it was that bad. I struggled. You know, you, know, you remind me. English isn't bad, but 
<laughs> Your English. English is perfect. You remind me of um, sometimes, even today, when I'm talking to my manager sometimes, I'm trying to express myself. There's something I want to say, but I end up <laughs> speaking in sign language. It sounds better in Swahili. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh. In your head, you're like, I, I should have said this thing the, the way I want it, but I just can't try. I can't put it to, to words how you would want it to So you need, you need an interpreter but, to interpret your English. Yeah, like, you can't. And you are the best performing English student I know. back home. I know, my mother is a, a, an English teacher. teacher. But she's there wondering what's wrong with my daughter's English. <laughs> she cannot Honestly, say Honestly, I never doubted myself as much as I did the <laughs> first few weeks. I was, I was like, do I even belong here? Oh, really? Yeah, I did, I did feel that. Mm. I did feel that, especially when we went to the wards. Because mm. we started as a healthcare assistant. Of course, before, before you get training. your pin. Yeah. yeah. So you can't practice. Yeah. You can't do anything. Mm. We were doing bed baths, assisting mm. with... Um, uh, meals and all that, mm. but then you will see a student doing mm. rounds with a nurse, and you're like, man, like for how long? I and know. then your exam is in like December, so that's Gross. three months of being a healthcare assistant. Mm. And then January, that's when you get your pin. Then mm. that's when you start your preceptorship. Like it was four oh. months of if if you're not strong in the head, mm. like you can really think of going back. Okay. And this was in a place where also there were no many African nurses as well. Okay. So transitioning was not that easy for oh us. Dear. We had to mm -hmm. we had to really rely on ourselves mm -hmm. to get the support. Mm -hmm. And yeah, tears were shed. Mm -hmm. They were. But I'm glad. It, it was a phase that we had to go mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it has shaped who you it are has. today, hasn't it? It has. So, um, Ivy, after eight months, you left and you went to the car club. Yeah. Because that was a cardiac ward. Yeah. So, um, did you apply for a new job or what happened? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. I went to NHS jobs and I applied because I really missed the car club. Because mm -hmm. I was like, no, I don't think I want to stay in the wards forever. Mm -hmm. I, I need to go back to the car club. So, I was mm -hmm. always looking for a car club mm -hmm. job. Then. Mm -hmm. I did get a few offers, okay. but then I was like, I think I love this hospital more. Mm. Well, first of all, it was blue, so yeah. I loved the color. Aww. So I think, I think that I'm moved by the most cheesiest things in this <laughs> life. But then, yeah, the color, it was such a pretty hot hospital. Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah, yeah. you like I it. I think the people in there will also mm. be as pretty as the building. Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah, I'll go for that one. How so has I it think. been so far? Amazing. Has it? Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. There's something I will break to people. Sorry okay. for ambushing you. This girl is taking a master's degree in cardiac care. Care. Yeah, that's that that's yeah. not easy. So it, tell it, us about that. How how is studying and at what point did you know what masters you really want to do? Because I know you had applied for another yeah. masters. Oh yeah, I and did. you had gotten okay. an offer and you turned it down. Story of my life. So I, I really I want to understand how how do you how do you um, do a self-analysis as Ivy and think about where you want to go in terms of your career such that you're able to settle on a certain master's or a certain short course? Tell us about that. Um, so when I moved here, I think I should show you that on my passport um, cover mm -hmm. thing, because um, it was custom made, yeah. I had them write my name uh -huh. and I had them write... Um, cardiac nurse specialist wow. at the bottom mm -hmm. I wasn't even a, I wasn't anywhere close to being one but I knew that's where I wanted to be okay I just wanted to specialize in cardiac mm -hmm. and so there's just something about ECGs that makes me happy okay no matter how terrible they can look mm -hmm. but it just makes me happy mm -hmm. and um one of the doctors we had in Mombasa, mm -hmm. uh, he was an, he was actually, he still is, I think, mm -hmm. the only electrophysiologist in Kenya. Who's what like, in the world is an electrophysiologist? So electrophysiologist, these mm -hmm. are like the people who know the uh, finer details of an ECG. Oh. Like they, the masters. Yeah, mm -hmm. like ECGs, them. They just mm -hmm. deal with rhythms mm -hmm. okay. and correcting rhythms. Okay, good. So he used to tell me, Ivy, um, you will not know all the ECGs. Mm. Just think about think about the ECG world being like the sea uh -huh. or an ocean. Wow. 
you can never get to all the pebbles in the or count all the sand. Mm -hmm. That's how vast the ECG world is. Mm -hmm. So it's like you take one and you just you'll fall in love with each and every mm -hmm. ECG. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, that sounds very, very in like interesting. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I was like, I need to go back to cath lab. Mm -hmm. I need to start studying. Mm -hmm. So I, I googled cardiac courses. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, okay, they are here, but then which one is closer to me? Because okay. the universities are like widespread. Okay. And which one will make me practice more independently? Okay. So I got one, uh -huh. but then I figured it was leading me in something else mm. that I didn't want to do. Mm. Um, so I had to turn that offer down okay. and uh, pick up the other one. Uh -huh. So the one I'm doing now is on cardiac care pathway. Okay. It's a... Um, it's called Professional Practice in Cardiac Care Pathway. Oh. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. <laughs> so, mm. Serious stuff, people. Mm? <laughs> professional, say that again. Professional Practice in Cardiac Care Pathway. Exactly what she said. <laughs> exactly what she has said. Uh -huh. So, it, um, it deals with ECGs, uh -huh. um, long-term um, long cardiac uh, conditions and yeah. acute cardiac conditions, how oh. to handle each patient. Yeah. Um, it will have a research bit as well. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have to do a prescribing course afterwards and a healthcare assessment as afterwards. So just to make me more independent. Yeah. But I'll have an in-depth knowledge mm. of how to deal with cardiac patients. That is very good. And that's good. what I wanted. That is very good. And I, you know, there's so much specialization in this country though. Because you can be a cardiac nurse, but there are branches as well. Subspecialties. Yeah, so you can be a heart failure nurse, you can be a cardiac rehab nurse, you can be an arrhythmia nurse, a um, chest pain nurse, things we don't hear of back home. Back home. So you're telling nurses back home that if they're interested in specialization, mm -hmm. United Kingdom is a good destination? It is. Trust mm -hmm. me, you will, your, your mind will be blown away. Mm. By the opportunities yeah. that are available. There are so many. So many. Um, that is very good. Ivy, mm -hmm. see, uh, I will tell you what I told Kemani mm -hmm. when I was interviewing him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we celebrate the final product and do not celebrate the journey that he has taken for someone to get here. Yeah. I don't think what you've achieved is a mean feat. So from the bottom of my heart, congratulations, oh, girl. Thank you. And I wish you well in thank your master's you. program. Thank I know you. you're going to make one very fine Oh, very fine. Thank you. Play Independent you nurse. Now, <laughs> Ivy, you may not know, but um, mm. I've read about you online. Huh? You Somewhere? at trust <laughs> wrote about you. They did. They interviewed you. The first you one at trust. The trust. You the at trust? One. Yes, the first one. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. Yes. So I've seen <laughs> your story online. <laughs> How did you come across the first Ivy, one? I do research I about my guests. <laughs> come on. <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> people don't know this, but oh god, I okay. wanted to be a journalist. <laughs> you are one interesting. In my eyes. That me. is what I wanted to be. <laughs> um, but life happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, before I bring you here, mm -hmm. I've dug about you a little bit. Okay. And now there are other things that I want to ask you, but okay. I will allow you to have a cup of tea, <laughs> and then we can pick this up from where we are. Mm -hmm. So Tim okay. Phoenix, thank you so much for being with us. She's not going anywhere, she's just having a cup of tea. And then we're going to talk about other things that I think she has the best, best, best information to share with us. So please stay tuned and a major shout out, major shout out to Dave Kim 254 Studios. Please check out their link mm -hmm. in the description box below. And if you are in the United Kingdom and you do not know Dave Kim 254 Studios, we need to talk. Come on, we need to talk. Ta-da!